Okay, here with uh, Lee Hurst. Uh, my name's Evan, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. It's been really great that you came down to Cyrocester. I mean, I guess it's not a place that you've ever thought to perform before. No, it's, uh, it's the first time I've been here. Uh, it was a lovely gig. Uh, battled through the snow, as did the audience. So, um, and it was well worth it. Yeah. So um, you've been running a comedy club down in London, uh, yeah. what was the name of that? That's the Backyard Comedy Club. And uh, when you started the club, did you find it quite easy because... Um... Well, it was started in 98 yeah. uh, and I'd left TV, the show I was doing on TV about, it was about nine months before. Yeah. So obviously we did get a lot of publicity when yeah. we first opened, uh, rolling off the back of that. And um, so yeah, to open with it was like playing Sagan, you know, yeah. sort of turning them away. Uh, and then, you know, reality bites after a while when you're like just another club yeah. fighting for the audience like everybody else. Yeah. And of course you couldn't be the one who's on the stage all the time so you're just a promoter who has to bring in... Yeah, I used to always look for bringing in some new comics um, yeah. and uh, Mickey Flanagan was, was a regular oh, yeah. in my club because he only lived up the road as well and uh, so he used to come in and play it quite a lot because he, yeah. um, he could stagger home afterwards with a few beers inside him. And, uh, but yeah, we saw we used to bring new guys in, there were guys I've worked with on the circuit before that. Um, but I did used to MC there a hell of a lot uh, when we first opened. Um, and, uh, but this time around, because we're just going to reopen after a two year shutdown period where it's been rebuilt, um, I've informed the management there that I won't be as, uh, mm. as regular as I used to be. Yeah. So, um, seeing as uh, you've been on uh, TV and all this kind of stuff, do you ever come up with a, a new comedian who you meet and do you get this sort of excited feeling that you're kind of meeting uh, celebrities? Yeah, when you see a good comic, it's uh, like a new one uh, mm -hmm. coming through, it's great, it's really good, you know, and, and you chat to them as well, um, during, yeah, especially if you're MC, mm -hmm. you can chat to them throughout the evening before they go on yeah. and, and afterwards. Um, and sometimes I, I try I try to pass on advice because mm. it was good advice was given to me by comics when I started. So you kind of like to repay that, pass it on, and you get a feel for the people whether they are receptive to it. Not that they'll necessarily take the advice, but they'll just listen to it. And it tends to be the ones who listen, not necessarily take, mm. but um, who progress. And you get some others who are a little bit arrogant at a very early stage, and they don't do it. But when you see a new one who's good. Um, you're all over them and you say, right, yeah, you know, they might come and do a 10 minute spot and then you go, right, we want you to do a 20. Yeah, yeah. So, um, it's, uh, you've just had a great uh, show. Did you, um, have you seen anyone recently where you felt you really connected with them? Not recently because um, I've been, obviously, the club's been shut for a couple of years and I've done a handful of club gigs um, just to keep my handy and, and, and this tour, and obviously, on tour I'm on my own. Um, but I've done, and also when I've been and done like five minute spots at clubs just to try out stuff, you, you're going from one club to another so you often don't see yeah. the other comics because you're in, on, out, round to the next one, etc. So not in the immediate um, recent times have I seen anybody, but probably two years back we, we, when we were still open, we were seeing some very good fresh blood coming through. Mm. Um, when uh, you came up with the concept, I, I wrote down a note and it was uh, my fear as a, a performer of bombing on stage. When has that ever happened got to a you? a connotation in Afghanistan. <laughs> <laughs> when that happens to you, uh, or if that has ever happened to you, can, have you got any advice how to get out of that for comedians? It's when, you, when I started off, I remember I did a, an open spot at a club in Ballon in London. Um, and there were two rooms to play, but as an open spot, you did one. And I did one room, and I tore it up. And I'd said at the start, I didn't even know there were two rooms, I said, do I have to play both rooms? And I said, no, no, you just do one as an open spot. And I did the first room, absolutely stormed it, and then went to the bar to get a, a drink, and the promoter came up and said, can you come and do downstairs as well? And I closed the first half downstairs, and I tore that up as well. That was on a Saturday. The following Thursday, I went to a gig in Harlow, did exactly the same material and didn't get a single laugh. And the only thing you can do, there's a wonderful double act back in called Chris and George, and they, uh, I gave them a lift back into London, and they invited me in for a coffee, and they took me through it all the way back in their flat, and um, they said, it just happens. Sometimes it just happens. But the thing I did on that night, which I would advise comics to do, is to know your material and just keep your discipline. 
and not, not fall apart. At least you can go away with your dignity like that. And if you know your material, it will get you through it. Um, later on, when you get more experience, if something's not working with the audience, you need to change tack. You know, so having, in many ways, to do a five minute open spot, you're probably better off having about 12 minutes of material, so you can dip in and out and try and find something that works. Okay, well, have a great journey back to London. Thanks, Thanks so much for giving the time. Yeah. And uh, cheers. <laughs>